Hello booktube, welcome to my channel or welcome back if you've been here before. My name is Beth Ann. Um, I'm going to start out with sort of a quick uh, chat and channel update. Um, if you want to jump right to the book review, I will have timestamped that below so you can um, jump right ahead. Um, but yeah, quick channel update. So I sort of inadvertently took a week off <laughs> from making booktube videos without meaning to. Um, and that was because I normally post a video on Saturdays and um, my family went camping this weekend and so I just didn't quite make that happen before we uh, went camping and then earlier this week I recorded um, some videos and the audio recording of my laptop wasn't working. So I think most booktubers have had a somewhat similar experience for various reasons at various times but I was like ah I want to throw my computer across the room so then I needed a couple days to recover from that before I re-recorded those videos. Um, so anyway the audio issue hopefully is just an idiosyncrasy that won't happen again or often, but the camping thing did sort of wise me up to the fact that summer is coming. Um, summer is coming! And uh, unlike most people, summer is my busy season as a, a bee scientist. Um, so I will be spending all of my weekdays collecting data um, outdoors, but then I still need to keep up with a lot of my computer work indoors, so very busy, and then um, because of my family's predilections, um, we will be camping at least every other weekend. That's what we started doing last summer with our two-year-old at the time. Now she's three, really loves camping, and um, why would we stay inside when it's a gorgeous Minnesota summer? So um, so I am going to be dropping back the frequency of my videos. I kind of assume most people don't really pay attention to that, um, but uh, for anyone who might. I'm just going to throw that out there. You might see me just a little bit less frequently. I've been posting consistently three times a week for the last several months on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. So now my goal is going to be to still post on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And then if I get together an extra video in a week, um, there might be a bonus post that sort of goes up over the weekend, but I'm not going to pressure myself to do those weekend posts um, since I will be out in the woods somewhere on many weekends. So just a quick channel update. Okay, now let's dive into the book. Today I want to talk about Memories Hostage by Booktube's own Margaret Bernard. Um, I read this book over the past weekend when I was camping. Um, I bought it on my Kindle um, and it was the perfect book for me to take camping. Um, it was, uh, it's it's sort of a lovely mystery romp. Um, in, uh, in 1883 Britain. Um, and sort of the funny thing about this book was uh, I bought it um, in March, sort of thinking loosely I might pick it up for March Mystery Madness. And so I read the synopsis when I bought it and was like, oh, this, yeah, this sounds interesting and up my alley. Um, and then I totally forgot about the synopsis in a couple of weeks um, since I bought it. Um, so was essentially going into it with fresh eyes and just remembered, oh yeah, it's set in like late 1800s Britain. Um, Margaret is really nice, so I was sort of thinking like Jane Austen-esque, uh, but slightly later period, but like people talking in drawing rooms and, you know, some snarky middle upper class humor. Um, and then boom, like on the first page, there's a naked woman with amnesia, no memory, in the bathtub of the private bathroom of a very wealthy, like, business titan um, in 1883 Britain. I was like, oh my god, what am I in for? Um, so that was a little bit of a surprising open. Um, and uh, and the whole book is uh, is a little bit more um, sort of scandalous than, uh, than I was expecting, but in a good way. Um, so the book opens with the naked woman in the bathroom, and then there's sort of uh, some cute moments as the wealthy um, gentleman, Henry McFarlane, discovers her, and everybody's very prudish, and it's like, well, what's going on? Don't look at the attractive naked body. Um, so that was cute. Um, and then the story sort of unfolds from there. So the mystery is what is going on with this naked woman who has no memory. Um, and she pretty quickly reveals herself to be, uh, for me, an amazing heroine, um, even in this very precarious, uncertain position. Um, you know, she sort of acknowledges like, oh, I could freak out, but I'm not going to. Um, and so she has a very, uh, very logical, thoughtful mind. Um, and she sort of wants to like get her feet under her and like find some stability and some normalcy, um, sort of immediately. Um, and then, um, 
the the mystery about who she is and where she came from and how this happened is pursued in part by Henry McFarlane and his younger brother Horace, um, and then also by the local police. Um, and we pretty quickly figure out that, or, or learn that all, there are a lot of maybe different motives going on um, between the, among the people who are trying to solve this case. So Henry and Horace McFarlane um, run a, sort of a big railway shipping empire of, of many different types of goods. Um, they have some mines and things, so they're like industry business magnates, especially Henry McFarlane who's running it. Um, we learn immediately that Horace is perhaps a little bit of a rake um, and has maybe had some inappropriate dalliances and things in the past, and so Henry's immediate terror is that maybe this is a scandal of Horace's that's coming to light, or maybe somebody who had been involved um, in some escapade with Horace is now trying to blackmail the family or something like that. Or it could be a rival industry titan family that's trying to bring down the McFarlands. Um, so he's sort of freaking out and really wants to get to the bottom of this. Um, and then the police initially are like, yeah, okay, we'll investigate. But then pretty quickly we start to suspect the police. Um, they don't necessarily seem to be doing their due diligence. Um, they sort of start pulling people off the case and it's like, hmm, police, what are you doing? Um, and so one of the detectives eventually sort of goes rogue and decides to continue investigating for himself. Um, and meanwhile, the woman, Agnes, um, as I mentioned, she wants to find some stability and normalcy, so um, she ends up getting a job, which appears to be a pretty secure job as a lady's maid, um, hopefully is, you know, sort of safe and, and will let her sort of establish a life for herself. Um, and uh, that's a job that was set up by one of the uh, policemen, a sergeant, so like, mm -hmm going on there. Um, and the job ends up being not quite what it seems. Um, but I don't really want to go any farther in the plot because of spoilers. Uh, but yeah, this was, um, this was the sort of mystery where the actual sort of like focal crime uh, or mystery that was committed, you know, the appearance of this woman with no memory, um, is sort of part of a larger plot. Um, and I really like those kinds of mysteries. Um, and so there's a lot of sort of different things that, that are happening in the background. Um, and I really, really liked parts of the ending, like the way we, uh, the, the way some things actually get explained and what those things are, um, was really satisfying to me. Um, and so I'm kind of like, how do I leave a booktube review when all I want to do is like, tell people the ending, but like, don't do that because people might read this book, Batman. Um, so yeah, so that's why I don't really want to go any further in the plot. But um, but yeah, so uh, so yeah, really cool sort of structure to the mystery. I thought um, there's some other sort of scandalous elements that come in, uh, like we find very early on. So this isn't a spoiler. I don't think that the woman um, Agnes lost her memory through hypnotism, um, and so it's uh, that's sort of a cool historical um, you know look at. Uh, sort of the spiritualist and hypnotism movement that was happening in, in the late 1900s. And um, yeah, so so that was cool, but also like, whoa, this is not Jane Austen drawing room. Um, yeah, and the uh, the setting is really fun. So the, um, the action in sort of the first half of the book takes place in Northern England. Um, and then the, um, I would say the action like the last half of the book, uh, maybe not quite half, but a lot of the later action takes place in Scotland. And so it was sort of cool uh, just um, ingesting that lovely atmosphere that I really like. Um, and I really liked the two uh, sort of main characters that really develop. So Agnes herself, I mentioned, she's the sort of heroine that I really like. She's very self, uh, self-aware. Um, that's, and that's clearly like a deep personality trait because it doesn't rely on sort of her memories and things. Um, so she's, yeah, she's really great. And then Detective Barton is the police officer that really gets invested in the case. Um, and, and he's, he's pretty great as like just a low key British detective, you know, he's like, uh, um, like the McFarlane's, like their view of him is they're like, oh, he's just this young guy, you know, like, what can he do? And then he starts like punching people and like, just being a total badass. Um, so I really liked him. Um, 
the the one thing about the writing, so this is Margaret's um, first novel, and so it does just read a little bit like a first novel, not in any way that made it hard to read or unenjoyable, but like one example of that was um, Henry and Horace McFarlane could be a little um, interchangeable sometimes. Um, and I think uh, that could be a reflection of their characters. So the part that sort of made them interchangeable for me is, is we get set up in the beginning to, to sort of wonder about Horace as sort of this rakish younger brother. And then pretty quickly, he just starts sounding an awful lot like his older, you know, very like staid, responsible brother. Um, and uh, it was just a little bit difficult to tell if that was actually like a reflection of how good a person Horace is as well underneath sort of the rakishness and scandalous mistakes like is he really just such a good guy that he's like okay time to grow up now like I'm done I'm gonna um you know help solve this mystery get really invested in it want to do the right thing um or was it uh was it more of like a writing issue that it was um uh hard to differentiate these two those two characters I mean yeah with siblings so especially yeah like it's like are they are they really the same? Am I like, are they really? <laughs> or, uh, so yeah, so I'd say that was the only thing that made me, you know, sort of as I was reading, be like, wait, what? You know, um, so I, yeah, I think that's really the only negative thing I have to say about the book. Um, because yeah, overall, I just loved it. Uh, it was a quick read. I think Kindle said it took me about three hours to read. Um, I think it's like 250 pages maybe in the physical version. Um, so yeah, just like a fun dramatic romp. Oh, and then the other thing I would say, uh, too, actually, in terms of, like, how much I enjoyed this book was, like, it was hard to put down. Like, I think the, um, the pacing was, was good in terms of, like, I, I kept wanting to find out what was going to happen next. Um, and so that's, that's always a good, uh, sign for me in a book, um, if I, if I sort of want to keep reading. Um, so I definitely got that feeling with this book as well. I was, like, just, I really wanted to know what was going to happen. <laughs> partly because I loved the main character and I was like oh my god please don't like kill her off or something <laughs> um so uh yeah I think I will wrap it up uh there um TLDR video version was yeah I really like this book um so you should all check it out so that I can talk about the ending <laughs> um all right thanks for watching this and I will see you all in the next video bye